of the second job yesterday and yo your uh, four <laughs> clicks uh, and I'm not okay. I feel like I was hit by seven trucks, headaches and everything. So anyone who has Pinado, uh, please send them my way. And from what I'm hearing, we are okay. I am asking for sanitizer and I'm going to ask for cloths as well. Uh, from the pe ladies that are outside, can I have a sanitizer to sanitize our guests? I will not be able to run around today. Um, someone said the first jab is worse, which was worse. I was not okay for five days. <laughs> now the second one, they said, no, it's a breeze. You won't even feel anything. Wow. <laughs> well, okay. Can I have the sanitizer? Uh, I'm talking to, uh, that means they can't hear me. Mr. B, this hand can't move. You can't hear me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that thingy to wipe. So welcome back to the second day, if not the third day, because we started on Thursday, um, of the Rustenberg Film Festival. Uh, we are so excited and happy that you have been with us. Some of you I don't, I've never seen. I'm like, give a mangba. I can't remember anyone. <laughs> I am sorry. So now we are going to. Well, I, ca I can't see well. Where's Mr. B? Who says when the person is sick, they must speak? <laughs> um, we are going to Hoshapela Matsoho, the Film and uh, uh, Publication Board, Hebat Lamopele, to address us about deciphering film classifications. Believe you me, I am going to be okay soon. <laughs> <laughs> Please take the podium, sir. Yes, uh, <laughs> our, our MC had a, was a second jab, second jab yesterday, so, uh, but do not be afraid. This one is just a special child, our one. So it doesn't mean that when you go get your jabs, you will be like this. It's a very, very untrue representation. That's something else. Uh, maybe she went to party last night. And then uh, I want to excuse you. Because now I got my second jab. And I was as strong as an ox. And uh, are we all over 18 here? I want to tell this to men. I see there's lots of men here. Where are the women? Where are the women? Yes, so I, there, there were rumors that uh, if you are a man and you get the jab, is it? So let me, let me say the rumors. Ne? The rumors are that, um, ten foot, are we live, by the way? I must ask. Online? Okay, thank you. That's fine, because this is a special message to all the men is that uh, I was told that if, if you get a jab, you know, a second jab, certain parts of the body will stop functioning. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, a, as a consent man who wants to keep his marriage, I got my second jab, well, after my first jab, I was very consent. So, the first few things that I had to do was to <laughs> if everything was working in order. And uh, I am proud to say, <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Floor is yours. Please bring the Santanizer, Mama. Santanizer, swipe it, the mic, next guest.
Dumelang. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Andrew Sebabu. I'm, I'm from the Film and Publication Board. Uh, I am not alone. I am with uh, Basitsana Lelake at the back there, uh, who will be uh, assisting me uh, in terms of, you know, uh, moving this program forward. Um, today, as the Film and Publication Board, we are going to talk to you about the work that we do at the Film and Publication Board. Uh, I was hoping that you will put the, the first, the very first slides on the board so that uh, uh, colleagues can actually see. Yes, thank you. I'm sure you guys have seen this logo before. Where have you seen it, if you have seen it before? Have you seen it though? You haven't seen this logo? Yo. Uh, if you look at, if you buy a DVD, a, a, a film, a, a DVD movie, uh, you'll find that there is, a, there is that logo there at the back of the, uh, of the package. Uh, that means it's us, we have seen the, the movie and we have actually classified the movie. Uh, I'm sure you have seen all these other, those uh, symbols and so on. And the letters and the and the numbers uh, you have seen that uh, as well, isn't it? No. Okay. All right, it's fine. And um, today we're going to talk about uh, the work of the FPB, so that uh, you know what is it that we do, and uh, you don't uh, find yourself in trouble with the law. Uh, put up the the second slide. Sorry, uh, sorry, colleagues. Uh, we had a challenge with with, uh, with with our connection. That's why I have to every now and then ask my colleague to, to put the slide uh, here. Now, okay. All right, uh, I'm advised there are people who are watching online. That's why sometimes there might be a delay in terms of putting the slide here. Thank you, sir. Um, colleagues, uh, my presentation today will focus on the following. Number one, I'm going to uh, talk to you about the mandate of the FPB. In other words, what is it that we do? We're going to look at uh, sections in our act uh, that are relevant to you guys as you produce, as you create, you possess, and you distribute films and games. We're also going to look at the penalties in the event that you do not comply with the law uh, when you're creating and then you, you're distributing films uh, and games. I'm also going to touch a little bit uh, about what is commonly known as revenge porn in terms of our amend am amendment act. Uh, I also going to talk to you about uh, about the films or photographs that depict uh, sexual assault or violence against children. And lastly, I'm just gonna at a high level uh, talk to you about the process of classifying a movie. So that's what I will be covering in this presentation. Now, um, first of all, let me uh, tell you that as the Film and Publication Board, we are a statutory body. In other words, we exist because of the law. We are created by the law. Uh, we actually created by the law uh, in terms of the Act, Films and Publications Act, 65 of 1996, we were created to regulate uh, the creation, 
the production, the possession, and the distribution of films, games, and other publications. Now, um, in us regulating the creation, the possession, and distribution of films, what is it that we want to achieve? We are doing that because we want to protect consumers or the public from harmful material. We want to protect children um, from exposure to disturbing or harmful material or from premature uh, exposure to adult material. We also make the use of children in pornography and exposure of children to pornography punishable by the law. That is what we do. Um, now, how do we do that? We do that by classifying films, we classify games, and other pub uh, certain publications. We also register you guys as distributors and exhibitors of films and games. Lastly, we deal with uh, what is called exemptions. Um, we're still going to go much deeper into this. But let me tell you that, uh, as I've indicated, uh, our objective is to protect consumers, uh, to give them uh, 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 you know, an advice so that when they are watching a film or they are about to watch a film, they know what to expect in that film. Uh, you don't want to take them by surprise. They must be able to know that in this movie, um, I'm likely to see people naked. I'm likely to see violence. I'm likely to see people using drugs, people having sex. And therefore, they can make their own informed choice as to whether they want to watch the movie or they would let their children watch that movie. That's what we do. Uh, people will say uh, FPB is a censor board, they, they censor our, our, our content. No, that is not the case. We only classify your movie, give it an appropriate age rating so that the consumers or the public uh, are advised of what content or what type of content does the movie contain. You can still uh, uh, exhibit your movies elsewhere, but you must know that uh, it will have a certain target market. Not everybody can watch that movie, so we don't we don't censor that uh, movie. We are, what we do is that uh, we are balancing your rights to freedom of expression through films, your right to creativity against the right to protect children from harmful material. Um, now, as I've already indicated that we were created in terms of the Films and Publications Act, 65 of 1996, uh, there are legal requirements that you must actually comply with if you are a distributor or exhibitor, uh, exhibitor of movies in South Africa. Now, specifically in terms of Section 18 of our Act, any person who distribute movies in South Africa must first register with us as a distributor and then submit such material to us for classification. Right? Every person, anyone, anyone who in this room uh, wants to be a distributor or is a distributor of movies, films, uh, games and certain publications must first register with us. The moment you are distributing movies, you are not register, uh, registered with FPB, you must know 
uh, you are committing an offense. And we'll come to that. Now, um, there is a distinction between registering with uh, the FPB as a distributor and actually submitting your content for classification. So the fact that you are registered with the FPB does not automatically give you the right to start uh, distributing films without submitting them for classification. So we, we must just get that clear. Now, the process of registration uh, as a distributor or a, an exhibitor, there is a prescribed form that you can get manually from the FPB or online. Uh, you're going to fill the form. Uh, there is a certain amount of money that needs to be paid. If you do it online, you're going to pay 1.3. If you do it manually, you pay 1.8. Then, after filling your form, making such a payment, you're also going to attach the original valid tax, uh, tax clearance certificate, as well as a proof of registration of uh, your business as a distributor. Then you submit those documents to the FPB. Uh, if we are satisfied that your documents are in order, we are going to issue you with a certificate of registration. Um, the certificate is valid for a period of a year, meaning that you've got to renew it yearly. Um, you can renew online or manually. If you renew online, uh, you are going to pay a renewal fee of 92 rand, and then if you do it manual, it's 121 uh, rands. It is important uh, to actually renew your registration. And in terms of the act, you must renew 30 days before the expiry of, the, of your certificate. Because if you fail to do that, uh, you are going to start the registration process from the scratch. I've already indicated that if you are a distributor, or exhibitor of, a movie, uh, of uh, films, you must register with us as the FPB. You submit your material for classification. However, there are circumstances under which you can actually register and make an application to us to say, look, I don't want to submit the material for full classification. Yes, I want to submit, but not for full classification. Can you consider? Uh, yes, in terms of uh, our act, and in particular section 22, speaks to what is called exemption. Uh, I'll give you an example. If you make a film that is about uh, cultural events uh, or sports, music, or even educational uh, material, spiritual events, uh, we don't really have to subject such a film to full classification. Therefore, you can actually apply to us for what is called an exemption that, look, I've got this material I'm going to distribute or I'm going to exhibit. Please grant me an exemption so that uh, you don't have to go through the whole process of classifying a movie. The second circumstance under which you can actually uh, request that uh, we do not subject your movies for full classifications, uh, classification process, it is when you want to exhibit films uh, at a film festival like this one. Uh, in terms of the act, if you are going to have a film festival, you must apply to us 30 days before the date of the film festival. Uh, and then in your application, there is a form. In, a, in your application, you are going to attach the following. You are going to attach a statement just tell, giving us the reasons why you are making such an application. 
you are going to attach a list and copies uh, of all the films that you are going to exhibit at a film festival. And then you, have, you are going to provide us with a brief uh, synopsis or summary of all those films and attach an affidavit confirming that all these films that you are going to show or exhibit at a film festival uh, do not have any child abuse material or do not contain any child pornography. And then you make a payment of 1200 the FPB will look at the, the application and then it, if it's satisfied that you meet all these requirements, they will approve such a film festival. Sorry? Okay. Um, now, now that I've told you guys that you must register, uh, submit your material for classification, let me tell you, if you distribute uh, or you exhibit movies without registering with us, as to what's going to happen to you. Uh, in terms of our act, in particular, Section 24, capital letter A, if you distribute or exhibit a film, game, or certain publications in public, and you are not registered with us as a distributor, you can actually be found guilty of an offense. And then upon conviction, you'll be liable to a fine. Or you can go to jail for up to six months if you are distributing without having to firstly register with us. Um, I think I need to tell you that we've got a, a new amendment act that has been passed by parliament, signed by the president, even though it's not yet in, in operation. Such act actually makes it even harder. It actually brings stiffer sentence in the event that you do not comply with our act because it provides that if you distribute without first being registered, you can actually be fined up to 150,000 or go to jail for a period of uh, not exceeding uh, eight months. Again, in terms of the current act, if you distribute or exhibit uh, films in public, which films have not been classified? you shall be guilty of an offense and upon conviction you will be liable uh, for a fine or you can actually go to jail for up to five years or both a fine and a jail term. Um, once again, our amendment act is stiffer on this one. It says you can actually be fined up to 500,000 or go to jail for up to five years. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see how serious it is uh, with regard to the issue of distributing uh, content that has not been classified by the Film and Publication Board. I mean, 500,000 is a lot of money. It means this is a serious offense in terms of our act. Now, another offense uh, in terms of our act, it relates to X-18 movies, pornography. In terms of our act, you are not allowed to distribute pornography, I, and I'm not talking about child pornography here now, uh, just pornography. Uh, you are not allowed to distribute uh, pornography uh, this sharing of pornography in your, with, with phones and everything, it's not allowed. Unless you are a registered, uh, you, are, you are a holder of a license to actually conduct the business of uh, uh, um, adult premises. So in other words, 
pornography can only be distributed at an adult shop. Um, maybe uh, when, when we live here, you guys must uh, borrow me your phones and, and then I check if you... you eh? <laughs> Look, you are going to jail for, for five years. In terms of our act, if you are found distributing uh, pornography and then you are not a holder of a license, you are not operating an adult shop. Do we have an adult shop here? You are, uh, is it? Good. Uh, if you want to watch pornography, go there. It's allowed. At home. You are not allowed to share it. You are not allowed to share it because you are not registered. But, 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 uh, in terms of our amendment act, that will now become a law. You will be able to share it. However, you cannot share it with, remember X18 pornography is for people 18 and up. You cannot share it with anyone below the age of 18. If you do share that with, a, with anyone below the age of, uh, of uh, 18, you can actually be fined up to 750,000. On a Leona, please don't. Or you can go to jail up to five years. So it's, it's very serious, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you happen to have pornography in your phone, please don't share it yet. And don't share it with people uh, below the age of 18. Um, I'm just briefly going to touch on the Amendment Act because I kept mentioning Amendment Act. We have a, our current act and then we also have an Amendment Act. Uh, as I've already indicated, uh, the Amendment Act was approved uh, somewhere in 2019. And it has been signed by the president. It's now a law. However, it's not yet into operation. Um, the Amendment Act introduces uh, it introduces something called uh, revenge porn. It wants to, to address this issue of revenge porn. Uh, I'm sure you have heard about it, where people will be in love, and then uh, they take each other, uh, you know, pictures and videos, being naked and doing all this and that. Uh, but when the the relationship goes sour, uh, one partner start sharing the pictures with friends and families. So, one of the most important things that the Amendment Act is introducing is to deal with that. It criminalizes or prohibits the sharing of a picture or a video of someone being naked without their consent with the intention of hating those uh, people. So no more sharing of uh, those uh, videos or pictures without the, the consent of the person. Even if when you took the, the, the picture, there was a concern. She said, look, uh, uh, here is me. I mean, so you can't share that and say, no, I have a proof that this person is the one who sent me this picture. No. You need her consent. You must ask him, uh, can, I, can I share with friends uh, this picture? Of course, she won't say yes. Now, in terms of the Amendment Act, in an event whereby you share a picture of someone being naked without their consent, uh, you shall actually be found, I mean, you shall, uh, if found guilty, you shall be uh, fined uh, up to 150,000 uh, rents or even go to jail for up to two years. This is in an event whereby the person on the picture cannot be identified or identifiable 
Uh, maybe you, it's from here downwards. We cannot see. This is uh, so and so. But the, the person comes forward and says, this is my picture. I'm the one who took it all. He took this picture with me on this day, and now he's sharing it. Where we can actually see the face, we can identify this person. The punishment is even double. You can go to jail up to uh, four, four years or be fined up to 300,000 or both a fine and an imprisonment. The Amendment Act further uh, prohibits the filming uh, of a of the filming or taking of a picture and distributing such a film or a picture uh, on social media where the picture depict a sexual assault or violence against children. When you see your neighbor beating up the child, you are not allowed to take the video or the photo in terms of the Amendment Act. Uh, I'm sure you remember two years back, I think, there was a video during the rounds where a certain woman at a crutch was shamboking the, the small one because we two dates. So in terms of our Amendment Act, you are not supposed to take that uh, a video or a picture. You are not supposed to distribute such a, 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 a picture. And if you do so, you can actually go to jail for up to two years or find up to 150,000 rand. One might ask, how are, are they going to know that it's me who shared the picture? I'll just share it and then I'll share it to Baron Lady Chain Mail or whatever. I'll share to all these people. Uh, this one, share it with that one. Uh, they won't know it's me. You are mistaken if you would want to think like that. Because in terms of the act, ISP, Internet Service Providers, are compelled to give the FPB or even the police information relating to anyone who share that content. We will go to Telcom. Telcom will tell us, oh, okay, this, this video or this picture of a naked woman, um, it was first shared by, from this number, and then this number belongs to that person. Then you go to jail. Can you see how easy is it to be, to be caught? Very easy. Uh, Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about the process of classification. Uh, the process of classification. What is, what is classification? Classification is when we assign a movie an age rating as well as a consumer advice. You see 10 to 7 PG, I mean uh, 7 to 9 PG, 10 to 12 PG, you see 16 LS and V and so forth and so forth. That is the process of classifying a movie. And I've already indicated why do we classify these movies? Because we want to protect the consumers uh, against this harmful material or for them to be able to make informed choice to decide that I want to watch new, this movie or I don't want to watch this movie because I'm, I don't want to see people having sex. And I wouldn't want my, my children to watch this movie because it contains horror, it contains violence, and so forth and so forth. That's why we classify movies and having that uh, uh, consumer advice. Now, when we classify movies, we use what is called classification guidelines. Uh, the classification guidelines are approved by our council uh, in consultation with the Minister of uh, uh, Communications and Dig Digital Technologies. Every five years, we go out there to the public, we consult about these classification guidelines 
so that they always reflect current societal norms and values. Uh, our current classification guidelines were actually approved and published in the Government Gazette in April and then uh, started to be in operation in June 2019. So soon we will be going uh, to the public to uh, revise or review our guidelines. Now, uh, now that we've got classification guidelines, what do we do as the FPB before we, 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 we classify a movie? We appoint a pool of people that we call classifiers. These people are not working for the FPB, but they are appointed on a contractual basis for not more than three years. Um, what are the requirements for one to be a classifier? And I'm sure most of you uh, uh, guys in this room are likely to qualify as classifiers. Firstly, you must just have a BA degree and you must have experience in arts, culture, social, legal, psychological, and educational services, communication science, media and political studies, NGO experience, um, society se sector experience, as well as advocacy and community services. So once we have a BA degree, the chances that you can uh, have experience in all those that I've mentioned, especially if you are in the industry, are very high. So there is an opportunity, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, when we advertise, if you feel that you can be a classifier, you apply. Now, when you submit a movie for classification, from that pool, we appoint three people. We call them a classification committee. They are going to examine the movie, they watch the movie, and then they are going to give it an age rating. In other words, they will tell us whether it's, it's, it can be uh, watched by all, it can be watched by uh, children between seven and nine, or 10, 12, 13, and so forth and so forth. And put that advisory. We are going to have an age rating as well as consumer advice. Um, now, we've got what, in our classification guidelines, we've got what is called classifiable elements. I'm sure you have seen these things. Am I correct? These are called classifi uh, classifiable elements. You can see them through these alphab uh, alphabetic symbols or weights. The purpose of this uh, uh, element is to actually alert consumers, as I've already indicated, that uh, when you're looking at the cover of the movie or it shows there, L, you know you're going to find strong language. People are uh, swearing at each other in this movie. If it says uh, N, N is for nudity, people are naked. Uh, if it's V, it's violence. These are the classifiable elements so that you know beforehand whether you, you would want your child to watch that movie or you would want to watch it yourself. So these are our classifiable elements that have been looked uh, at. Just to give you an example uh, of criminal techniques. Uh, criminal techniques, uh, an example is where in a movie there is a scene where they are, you know, they are teaching people how to commit a crime. For an example, you're watching a movie and then uh, you see a scene where someone plan to commit suicide and then they commit suicide. That is criminal techniques. We are supposed to inform the public that you might learn dangerous things there. People robbing a, a bank, they, 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 they plan, then they execute the plan, they rob the bank. So we must be able to uh, alert consumers. These for substance abuse or drugs. 
substance abuse. Uh, it's when people are using uh, uh, what you call nyaope and, and drugs. Uh, drinking alcohol excessively because I am saying the word excessively because there is a difference between substance abuse and substance use. If you drink alcohol in a bar, you are fine and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Or you buy alcohol at home, you drink, you finish uh, the whole case, there's nothing wrong with that. But the moment you are drunk, you can't even walk, you want to drive, that is substance abuse. Um, we've got IAT, Imitative Act and Techniques. We're also supposed to alert consumers uh, if they are sins of that nature in the movie. Um, because uh, I'll give you an example. When you, children are watching wrestling. Normally, uh, what do they do after wrestling? They start kicking each other, wrestling against each other. So we must alert the public that there are scenes where children might want to actually imitate those scenes. Uh, then, as someone in uh, taking care of the children, you are able to say, no, 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 I won't allow my child to watch this. But with me, I'm fine, I can watch it. Horror, where you know, they're showing scary things. People are killing each other in a scary way, and so forth and so forth. L for language, here you're using an MF weight and so forth and so forth. And then uh, N for nudity where uh, you know, people are naked. There are scenes where people are naked. And again, uh, when we classify movies, we always consider what is called context so that we arrive at an appropriate age rating. Uh, Obviously, there is, there, is a, there is a difference between someone who is naked because they are taking a shower and someone who is naked because they are having sex. So if you were to classify such a movie, you might not get to the same age rating uh, because the impact is different. Uh, I'm sure a child will be able to tolerate seeing someone naked because they are showering or they are swimming or, or at the, uh, on the beach, but having sex is something else. As for sexual conduct, anything to do with sex, uh, kissing, touching, showing breasts, uh, anal, you know, uh, private parts and so forth, we must alert the public about those uh, sins in a movie. Sexual violence, that's where violence is being used, uh, as, well, as well as violence. So these are the classifiable elements that we look for when we classify a movie and then we, that's why you see, uh, oh, prejudice, let me not uh, jump this one, prejudice. Uh, prejudice, it is when uh, you pre prejudge someone uh, or we've got uh, preconceived uh, opinion, you've got an opinion about someone, uh, without a good reason. And usually your opinion is based on what is called identifiable uh, groups. In other words, your opinion might be based on sex of the person, on the gender, on race, on origin, sexual orientation, and, and what else? Uh, gender, sex. Okay, and, and, and all that. For an example, if, if you are going to give an opinion or judge someone because that person is a woman, you say, look, we can't be led by a woman. That is prejudice because now you are saying you have, got a, you have a, an opinion about the woman or this person, which is not, it's not based on facts, but based on the fact that this person is a woman. If you call someone Kwere Kwere, that is prejudice. If you say, 
This one is Stapon. Uh, oh, no wonder he Stapon. He's Zulu. That is prejudice. Because your opinion is just based on where this person originates from or race and so forth and so forth. That is prejudice. If you were to jump, you jump to 19, eh? slide 19. Now, in our classification uh, guidelines, we have what is called age ratings. I'm just going to quickly go through the categories of age ratings so that you are aware of them. Thank you. We've got an age rating category of A. What does A stand for? When you're watching a movie and then there is A. A, all. Thank you so much. It means you won't find anything that might damage the poor kids or they might find it uh, harmful to them. And then we've got PG. PG stands for parental guidance. In other words, there again, the elements are not, you won't find uh, violence, you won't find sex, you won't find strong language. Uh, children, all, all children, all people, including children, can actually watch this movie. But for children, there has to be a parental guidance. There has to be someone who is a parent who is able to explain to them whatever that they might not understand. Another category is that of 7 to 9 PG. What it means is that this movie can only be watched by uh, anyone from the age of 7 upwards. No one below the age of 7. If it's between 7 and 9, you need parental, uh, parental uh, uh, guidance. Here we're talking about the movies that uh, contains... Uh, they are of educational value, they, they are entertaining to those children, and therefore there's nothing wrong with them watching the, the movie. Another category is that of 10 to 12 PG. Only 10 and upwards can watch the movie. No child below the age of 10, but 10, between 10 and 12, you need parental, parental guidance. Uh, we are talking about movies that uh, those that are below the age of 10 might find it threatening or disturbing. And for those that are 10 and upwards, they find it entertaining and they might also get educational value out of that. We have 13. No child below the age of 13 can watch the movie, only 13 upwards. Uh, they are able to consume such content. Then we've got 16. No one below the age of 16 is, is allowed to watch that movie uh, because they will find it threatening and harmful and disturbing to them. And here, the classifiable elements that I've indicated there uh, are real and a little bit strong. If people are having sex, you might not see them having sex, but for an example, uh, you might see a juve moving. If you, two people are mom petong and then the juve is moving, obviously uh, they are not playing the karata. Uh, therefore, anyone below the age of 16 might not be able to tolerate that, but 16 upwards, they will, they will be able to consume such material. They will understand what is happening. Uh, therefore, you are not allowed, uh, I mean, you're, you, you can't allow anyone below the age of 16 watching such content. Now, we've got 18, very strong. Now, the elements are very strong. If there is violence, it's serious violence. If it's horror, it's horror. Uh, the element, uh, classifiable elements are very realistic there. They are very strong. Uh, if there is language, it's very strong. 
you start hearing people calling each other uh, MF weights. Only 18 and above can actually consume that material. Then we've got X18. There is 18, there is X18. X18 is specific, it relates to porn, pornography. Uh, more we do why, why, why. Uh, only 18 and above can watch that movie. I've already indicated that this one you cannot distribute anywhere except at an adult shop. And uh, you can see go adult shop, uh, even when you get there, the windows are dark. Even when you get in there, how everything from the from the door, you have to go around the corner so that you know not by chance uh, anyone below the age of 18 is able to see what is happening in there. Then we've got uh, what is called refused classification. Here we are talking about a uh, movies that contain child pornography, propaganda for war, incites imminent violence, or it advocates hate speech. So these movies are classified as refused classification because by law you are not supposed to create them, you are not supposed to produce, you are not supposed to, to, to possess or to distribute very serious. You have no uh, reason to be in possession of child pornography or to even create a child pornography because you're going to jail on a serious note. Uh, however, if someone happens to create a movie that border along the line of uh, hate speech or even child pornography. Before we go to jail, you go to jail. As the FEB will look at the movie and see if indeed this movie contains child pornography. We've got a team of uh, people called uh, child protection uh, officers. They are trained to check the movies and check if indeed. People that are in there on the movie are actually children because sometimes uh, you'll find people appearing as if they are ch children and so forth and so forth, but they are over the age of 18. However, for that, our act still says that anyone who appears or de depicted or presented as someone below the age of 18 uh, and is engaging in sexual activities that amounts to children, uh, child pornography. So if there is such a movie, we are also looking, going to consider if this is a do documentary or it has artistic merit or is a matter of public interest before we can actually classify it as a child porn. And lastly, we have what is called XX classification. Here we are talking about movies that you can have for yourself, but you cannot share it with anybody else. You can create for yourself own consumption, but you are not allowed to share with anybody. These are movies that contains explicit sexual conduct, which violates uh, the rights to human dignity. We are talking about movies that contains bestiality, Incest or rape. Uh, Ghana, what is what is bestiality? Anyone? Bestiality. You cannot share movies that contain bestiality, incest or rape. What is bestiality? What is incest? Anyone? Bestiality is when someone is having sex with an animal. You want to ask? Or oh, incest. Okay, someone said, that is bestiality. 
We don't know why you would want to create such a movie. You can create, it's not, it's not a criminal offense, but you cannot share with, it with anybody. If you do, that's when you are committing a crime. Incest, go for it. No, let's let's hear another one. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, let me hear another one. My brother. Yes, two people having same blood relations. Yes, family member. Co okay, cousins, because that one is controversial. Uh, people having the same blood relations. That is incest. You can produce that movie, you can create, but you cannot distribute such a movie. It's a criminal offense. And now let's look at the offense in the event that you go on and distribute movies that has been classified as refused or XX. Now, in terms of our act, anyone who knowingly distributes broadcasts or exhibit in public a, a film that has been classified as a refused classification or has been classified as XX or would have been so classified had it been referred uh, to, uh, to classification. Such person is committing a crime and then uh, shall be fined or imprisoned uh, for a period not exceeding five years or both a, an imprisonment or a fine. And in fact, in terms of our amendment act, the fine is 500,000 and one can go to jail up to five years. That is the law as it stands relating to um, creation, production, possession, and the distribution of films in South Africa. Uh, Program director, I don't know if, because I think that was the my last slide. I don't know if there are questions. Okay. We are getting the mic for. Is there anyone who have a questions? I I had a question. Hi, how are you? Fine. Um, good, thanks. You said um, related to pornography, I get it. We say if you want to watch pornography, you have to go to an adult shop, right? So what about um, the Twitter accounts that are created for porn and um, the group chat, the Modi WhatsApp, Modi Telegram, and all those things? What happens to them? And also, um, I can be 15 and it's easy for me to access a porn site. I can just lie and say I'm 18. What about those? Uh, another question was uh, the only two questions. Okay. Or maybe I want to. Do you want me to answer that, or you want, you want me to take uh, maybe two? No, you can answer this one, then we'll get those okay. two. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, my sister. A very good question. And now, let me indicate that when our law was made, uh, it's, it's the act that uh, I'm talking about here, it's, of, uh, it's a very old act. Uh, it's a very old act. During that time when it was... Um, Proclamated. Obviously, we did not have the social media, the streaming, and everything else. So, our act is silent on that. However, as I've already indicated, we've got an amendment act, which is ready any minute from now, it might kick in. Uh, the amendment act uh, talks to what is called a uh, online commercial distributor and non-commercial distributor. So if you are an online 
in a commercial, in other words, you distribute online for the purposes of making money, uh, all those sites, you are supposed to register with us. And we've got what is called online monitors. These are the people who will go online and check if you do not distribute such material to children below the age of 18. And in fact, you put in measures to make sure that whoever wants to access this um, uh, content on your platform, uh, you must make sure, verify that indeed this person is, is not below the age of 18. Um, the act, as I, 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 I've said, is not yet into operations, but once it is in operation, those platforms, they will be required to say, look, as Netflix, as so and so, this is what I'm going, these are the measures I'm going to take to ensure that nobody's going to watch this content if they are below the age of 18. If you need ID plus PIN, whatever that they might need, but they must come up with measures to ensure that no uh, children below the age of 18 are able to access such serious, uh, such content. It is by law that they are obliged. They can't tell us and say, but what am I going to do? No, they must come up with, if they were able to come up with these processes, these things that you can watch that online, they, they might as well come up with measures to ensure that not everybody can access their, their material so that uh, we make sure that ch children don't go there and, and, and consume that material. Um, that's, th that's, the, uh, that's, that's the position as it is currently. Uh, and I think I've covered the issue of, okay, I've, I've indicated that, that they must, they are obliged to take uh, measures to ensure that no one uh, below the age of 18 access such material. And then, before I forget, because I, I, I was talking about a uh, commercial distributor. If you are a non-commercial distributor, uh, you actually, uh, you consume that, it's for private, or, or yeah, it's, it's for your own consumption or private use. You, you stream porn yourself uh, on your phone. I'm talking about the Amendment Act, remember? So, uh, so don't uh, confuse the two. Initially I said in terms of the old one, uh, it's, it's, it's an offense to, to be you know, distributing and all that uh, adult material using your phones and so forth. So in terms of the Amendment Act, it's no longer an offense. If you're doing it for private consumption, it's fine. You don't have to register. Uh, however, don't forget you cannot share it with anyone below the age of 18. You cannot share the, the, the videos or the film uh, or the pictures of someone who's naked or having sex without their consent. You can consume it for your own purposes, personal consumption. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I want to ask that uh, with the monthly installment fee that you guys are talking about in terms of putting up the publication, is it when you share the things uh, to make business use, is it, is it uh, appropriate to use that publication in terms of monthly fee? Because I don't understand it. Or is it a must that we have to pay it? I thought I will have the slides here. A monthly fee. Uh, we said that if you you are supposed to register as a distributor, ne? and then we've got a form that you must fill. Is there online or manual? We said online you pay one thousand three hundred. It's actually one thousand three hundred and fifty-seven thirty-three cents. If it's manual, it's 1,816 rand, 33 cents. You pay it once off. You're only going to pay when you renew. And when you renew online, it's 92 rand, 21 cents. 
If you do it manually, you come to the office, you, we give you a form, you fill. It's 121 rand, rands, yeah, nine cents. So we don't have any monthly, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any question? Um, oh, it's Basi. So, Andrew, I have a question. Um, you said that maybe most of the people around here with um, classification being around maybe the Bachelor of Arts space, um, a number of people who could be eligible to apply, right? So the classifiers that you have within the Film and Publication Board, are they permanent employees? That's my first question. And then my second question was, um, when you spoke about uh, the Amendment Act, right? Uh, mainly on the um, distribution of picture site, right? So say I'm a new mother, uh, I have a firstborn child, right? And I'm excited about it, you know? And I'm there bathing my child, be it a girl or a boy, and I want to send a picture um, of this particular child to my husband, right? And in taking a picture of this child, um, innocently so, the child is naked, right? Um, in many cases, a vagina is hidden, but then is naked. You can see um, the face, the breasts, um, the legs, the top of the vagina, or the penis. Um, could that be something that uh, would be punishable according to um, what you've alluded to in the um, Amendment Act? Thank you, thank you for the question, uh, Basi. Uh, number one, are classifiers permanent? And I've indicated that we appoint these people uh, on a contractual basis uh, and, or a part-time basis and they can actually be appointed for a period not exceeding three years. Of course, in terms of our act, uh, we can actually renew for another term of three years. Uh, so they are not permanent. That's, uh, that's the, uh, the long and short of it. They are not permanent. If you are working somewhere and then you feel you might still have spare time, uh, to can come and be a classifier, you can do so. Right? And the second question. When we classify, we always look at the context. Uh, the context. Um, I'll give an example. Uh, strong language. Um, if we classify strong language in a film just under normal circumstances and strong language used in a comedy, the impact is different. Someone who is calling motherfuckers and all that in a comedy uh, will always, I mean a comedy, the intention, the context is to make people laugh. You won't uh, necessarily find that offensive. But if you're watching a movie and then they start using those MF8, all of a sudden you feel it, hey, this is too much. So that is the context. I've also uh, given an, uh, an example of someone who is naked. I'm sure you wouldn't feel that uh, uh, your child would be traumatized if they were to see someone take a shower, you know, uh, rather than someone who is naked because they are, they are they are uh, uh, barking. They are having sex. They are touching, touching, and all that. So we look at the context. Someone who is showing breasts because they uh, um, are You wouldn't be feel offensive looking at people who are ladies who are at the read and showing breasts uh, than someone you're going to meet at the mall. 
uh, bare breasts. That is the context. So, coming back to your question, you are showing your hubby, your new born baby. The context, the intention there is just to show your husband the baby, the new baby. The context under which this is happening, it's, it's, it does not have, it has a low impact. Um, a low impact. However, we are still saying, be careful of that because you've got people called pedophiles. Pedophiles are those that people who prey on little, uh, uh, you know, on the small ones. Uh, that photo or that picture might end up in the wrong hands uh, of someone who would want to use it for something else. Uh, so you must be um, careful of material that unintentionally so might promote or advocate child pornography. Because if that picture gets into the hands of someone who is a, a pedophile, they will, they will not find it as a picture of a new one being celebrated. They will find it as something else. It is not a criminal offense to do that, but be careful uh, not to promote a material that uh, can actually advocate child pornography. Thank you. Other question? Thank you so much, sir. I was listening to you and I was thinking, as vendor people, we would have been arrested a long time ago, all of us. Because in our culture, uh, we used to marry our cousins. As I stand here, my mom and dad are cousins. <laughs> and yes, this one says you are right. <laughs> you remember, I even said, no, that one is controversial. Because we're also looking at, uh, you know, remember here we are balancing uh, freedom of expression as a right in the constitution against other rights. The right to, to practice your own culture. Mm -hmm. The right to express yourself uh, creatively in terms of producing all these movies. So we, we, we balance those rights. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's something else. It's something else. For now, you can, you know. Yeah, but we've learned a lot. Thank you so much. Um, for those who have just arrived, I am your MC. He is my cousin assistant. <laughs> we are joking. Don't start, my cousin. <laughs> for those who have just arrived, um, uh, I, I am not well today. I took my second job yesterday at the Waterfall Mall. And therefore, today is not one of my best days. I'm not okay, but I am fighting to do this. So, Rita Fates. But I, th I think you took me serious when I say, if you don't get a job, you won't get in here. <laughs> I had to take it. My day was yesterday. I had to take it, uh, the second one. And they've said it's, it's easy breezy, the second one, can't they? Not for all of us, but some people, they don't have any symptoms, but I guess I'm one of those who do. Uh, so I'm feeling cold and hot at the moment, and my this hand is not working. So I um, feel so many things, like I was hit by a truck. But anyway, we are going to continue. We are having from SA Film Organization, Mr. El Maima, who couldn't join us here. I don't know if we are ready. Um, he's joining us online, so it will be an online one. Um, once you're ready, you let me know so that we can continue. I will be watching here on the screen. Huh? No, he's not here. He couldn't, he couldn't make it. We're doing it.